All right, we're live. Here we are. Richard with me. All right. All good over there? Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Let's just see what we got going on here. Uh, we've got some people. We've got Luke with us. Excellent. Um, how many people we have today? Nice. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, and I did a little poll too. Actually, I'm just going to publish the poll right now. Um, because a lot of people were talking about it. Let, let's face it. Uh, you know, we had the FOMC yesterday. Uh, ECB just came out a while ago. They raised, as expected, like 25 basis points. You got the Bank of Japan tomorrow. I, don't, I didn't expect the ECB to do anything. I didn't expect the Bank of Japan to do anything. I didn't expect the FOMC to do anything. And that's kind of how we, we played it. But you never know. You know, you never know. These things can happen. There could be surprises. So I kind of want to know if anybody else was playing the strategy. I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to say no. And the reason why I say that is because there wasn't a lot going on in the market. A lot of people probably thought they'd just sit on their hands or maybe thought that if the market wasn't going to move, well, what can I do? You know, should I sell some vol? I, I, I don't know. So it'll be interesting to see, <coughs> excuse me, if we come up with yeses or no's. Um, but overall... Yeah, my, this... my, my view is slightly less pro crypto but my view is that everyone who's going to buy is bought and everyone who had to sell has sold and uh and the kids don't have any money to spend anymore so they can't buy any more there's, no, there's yeah. no credit available for leverage speculation yeah it doesn't seem like there's uh very much in the way of inflows right now and a lot of people who are in are sitting on the sidelines you know it's summertime it's a great time to sit on the sidelines a lot of institutional players are kind of you know backing off so uh it's quiet you know and we've seen this happen in other markets before too in the summer now will this continue beyond the summer in crypto it's anybody's guess i suspect that the market we see in october is going to be significantly different than the, the, the market we see now uh, but that's certainly the nature of crypto and as you've pointed out a few times you know every 90 odd days uh we have a pretty significant move mm. on average in in crypto so um, i was i was stopped in the street today actually by a friend of ours nick uh, he's riding past on his motorbike um he's into crypto you know long-term hodler and um you know like like many people in bitcoin he's he's still accumulating as and when he gets spare cash but you know not just not going 10x on whatever is available like like we used to right um, yeah. So I think you know it's not like crypto is dead. It's just that it just isn't, yeah. isn't the hot the hot thing right now. Yep, just quiet right now. We've seen that, and you know this is part of a market's maturation. You know, it's uh, it, it had to calm down at some time. Uh, there's going to be some wild days ahead, I'm sure. Uh, so we just need to sit through this um, and and write it out. And and yeah, the smart thing to do is to scale back if you're going to sell vault, no problem. Just mm -hmm. don't do it in huge size. Don't bet the farm, you know, because uh, it's easy for the market to get pushed around. So I, yeah, I held off selling vol up until the FMC, but now we've been through the FMC and a half a day's gone by. I'm thinking, well, if I buy vol, I'm going to lose money. So <laughs> you know, nothing left to do but sell it, right? Yeah, and I've done the exact same thing, which which I'll show everybody uh, in a minute. I, I did sell some vault. I've also bought uh, a little bit too, but I'll get to that in a second. So, uh, so what we'll do here is we will go through our usual. Here, let, let me just queue up what we got going on here. Head over to the slides. Uh, where are we? Trading crypto with us. So, as always, we're going to review the, the current market. Um, Kurt trade, trade strategies. Uh, I've just put some stuff on today, actually this morning. Took some stuff off last night. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about using one by three ratio spread. Now, I don't have one set up currently. I was, I was, I was hunting. I was also hunting for a butterfly uh, prior to the FOMC, but I couldn't make the numbers work. Hmm. Uh, and we can always talk about that later if anybody has any questions. But Richard, you do have some one by threes on, so you'll be discussing that a little bit later on. What yeah, I'll do I've is I'll put, I'll, I put one in. Uh, yeah, I put one, a little one, experimental one in, um, just to see if we could trade some build build up some kind of trade around it. Um, sure, sure. I mean, what we can do is um, I, I've just put a few slides together just to kind of explain uh, what the one by three and, and, and the philosophy behind it looks like. So once I go through that, then 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 uh, it'll be great for you to show us. Hmm. Choice you got going on. 
Uh, actually, let, let me jump over right now. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, actually, let me just see who's here. What do we got here? We got Core from Holland. And of course, we've got uh, Gin Andrea from Italy. It's always nice to have, have you with us. Luke. Oh, and Marbella. It is hot in Marbella. You know, and I was talking to some friends earlier today in southern France and in southern Spain, and it is cooking there. It's not so hot where we're at now, but uh, it's definitely hot down there. Okay. Let me just share my screen. Okay. Well, I assume everyone can see this. So <clears throat> this arrow, it says July 25 here, long strangle. No, it's on July 25th, that was the day before yesterday, on Tuesday, Tuesday evening, actually, I put it on a long strangle. I could see that volatility was not moving. It was slightly ticking up. I mean, just yeah, it, it, inconsequential, really. But I thought, okay, maybe the Fed will come out and announce something that nobody's expecting. Probably not. So I put on a long strangle. I bought the 1900 calls and I sold or, and I bought the 1800 puts and you can see here this is 1900 uh, 1800 and this is a July 28th expire so this is a long gamble play I was hoping you know maybe we'd go up to 1950 or you know 2000 or I wasn't expecting anything crazy uh, it didn't happen uh, so I took the trade off uh, last night and and this morning now I lost a little bit on the puts actually made a little bit on the calls but that was inconsequential. So this trade is now gonzo, finished, done. That was a short term. Just thought I'd bet a little bit. It was uh, you know, those options are cheap. They're cheap, super low vol. There's no premium, so that was worth it to to uh, just in case something crazy happened. So let me just expand out a little bit. We can see what we got going on here. So this morning I color coded everything. I color coded everything. I got to organize this morning. I put color codes on all the different trades so that there wouldn't be all these different lines all over confusing, right? It's like when you look at a technical analyst screen sometimes, it's like someone threw a pot of spaghetti at it and you're trying to figure out what the hell's what, right? I, you know, I don't want that. So anyways, I did put on... Was like long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did put on a short strangle this morning uh, and we can see, and this, that's why I put July 27 here, 2,000 calls, Okay. 1650 puts now in fairness i didn't get all the 1650 puts i was trying to make the market i didn't want to remove liquidity unless i had to <coughs> excuse me so i have more calls and puts at this moment but i still might get filled on the 1650s and these expire august 11. do i normally play such short term not usually i mean i do small trades like that sometimes but i don't want to stick my neck out i don't i don't want to uh you know, sell September's. I don't even want to sell the end of August, to be honest. I mean, I, I, I will, but the market is so dead right now. And, you know, I, I don't want to be stuck in something uh, short, you know, and, and, you know, go to the end of September and vol starts to really kick up at the end of August, or early September and get hosed, right? So, uh, although a lot of the, the, the time premium would have been taken out. But if IV spikes, that's not going to matter. It's going to hurt. So I put that trade on. I'm happy with that. Um, I don't know how many days to expire that is. Uh, what's that, 11, about 14, 15 days or so. So that's pretty cool. And what I have been doing um, the last uh, week or two is I've been slowly picking up long puts. Uh, and we can see here, I've got all, actually here, Let me let me zoom this like this and we'll be able to see and I've got there. I put all these uh, puts the same uh, same color here just so we could see. But I'm just slowly picking these up and these are usually around 10-ish delta and these are just insurance policies. I'm just putting a little bit, you know, sprinkling it all through. So if we do get some catastrophic down move, which is the danger for me, I'm not so concerned about the upside because of course we're trading on Deribit and I own the underlying asset. So if it goes up, happy days. You know, it, it, it's worth more. I'm, I'm quite pleased. The danger is to the downside. So I want to make sure that if there is a, a move to the downside, I'm at least mitigating some of that risk by some of these long puts. And you can see the different strikes and different expiry dates that I have going on. Not much going on in this market. I needed to get my theta back up. Uh, my theta is now positive because you, you have to recognize too every time I buy, even though they're cheap puts, uh, they're out of the money, they're longer dated, they are chewing up some theta. 
Uh, so I wanted to get a little bit. So that's what the short strangle chose to, is doing. I looked just before this call and I can see that Vols and I, and I saw right after the FOMC didn't do anything, uh, we had IV start to move down to new lows. So we just keep creeping down and down and down. So I'll see what happens uh, by next week. And I might put on some other strategies. I might look at a one by three, which Richard will explain after a little bit. But Richard, why don't I hand it over to you? Uh, if you want to just kind of talk about some stuff that you have on, then I'll go through our the, the slides I put for the uh, ratio spreads. And then you can, you can share those uh, positions. Uh, yeah, sure. Let, let me just turn my screen off. So I hope that um, made sense to everyone. Okay, is this the right? Okay, yeah. Um, position wise, so uh, I've got some residual positions expiring tomorrow. Um, nothing too exciting there. It's all looking. Uh, we took a bit of a gamble on some some uh, overnight calls. <clears throat> um, I think they'll, they'll be okay. <clears throat> um, and then 29th, that's uh, Saturday, we picked, we found a bit of value um, on the 10 delta on. on um, on the Saturday, uh, vols normally drop off on a Saturday heavily, so this this will get kind of work with us, I think. Um, and fourth of August, we've got a couple of positions. Normally, I'd have a lot more positions on in the, in the one week, but I've been holding off prior to the FOMC, so I, I've just resumed selling selling vol uh, this morning. And then the, my pre-FOMC trade was actually the. You see here, I've, I'm long the point two of the twenty nine. 500s, and I'm short 0.6 of the 30,500s. Um, and I was actually actually able to do that trade at a, at a net credit. Um, uh, the price is now so 253 versus 134, so it's still, yeah, it's still there's still value there um, in time value. So um, the, on that trade, the rationale for this trade is that if we go up, we, I don't think we're going up very far. So um, we might get like a thousand dollar rally, maybe. Um, in which case my point two long calls will, will get, be in the money, um, and my point six will, short calls will start getting closer to the money. So I'll think about either rolling them or, or you know, gritting my teeth and and uh, and, where, and uh, weathering it. Um, but it's a super short dated position. It's what fourteen days to run. So if that is wrong, I can roll those those thirty fifth. 500s out to 31, 500 somewhere else, uh, and eventually get rid of them. So they won't matter too much. And all the while, I'll be picking up the the long camera of or the long delta uh, in in this point two. And I did the same on the downside, but on that downside trade, I actually got I think it was um, for zero premium total because um, I just didn't. Again, I I thought downside was probably more more likely than uh, upside. But I just didn't see a massive sell-off. I, I just don't think people are in the mood to get scared at the moment because no, nobody's got any leverage, right? So, so sell-offs are going to be slow, as well as uh, rallies. I mean, unless, unless I don't know, the U.S. government comes out and says death penalty for anyone owning Bitcoin or something like that, you know, then <laughs> that causes a sell-off. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear you, Shane. Are you, are you on mute? Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. 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 I was chuckling at your, <laughs> at your, uh, your comment. Yeah, and you know, I, th I really think it's going to be news-driven. You know, whatever big yeah. move we see next, whether it's a 5% move or 3 or 12, I think it's probably going to be a news-driven event. Uh, so there's nothing else happening. Yeah, so my, my rationale here was that I, want, I wanted some long gamma exposure, but not too much, and I didn't want to pay for it. So mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'm a natural short seller. I'll pick up some long gamma, but I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to sell some, some short-dated gamma around it. In more size um, to pay for it. So if we do, if we flatline and do nothing like we kind of are, then I'll get paid anyway. Like I'll get paid a few, a few basis points, mm -hmm. maybe a hundred basis points. Right. And and if not, then I can pick up <coughs> the gamma. And if we, and if it really, if vol goes crazy, then I'll I'll win on the vol. I can just sell those positions, mm -hmm. and again roll roll those short dated um, positions because ro rolling short dated positions that have gone wrong to longer dated ones is always easy. Mm -hmm. uh, if vol goes up, then you know uh, uh, the function, the, the price of an option is that roughly the volatility multiplied by the time to run. 
well, because there's only two weeks to run, the time to run isn't very high, therefore vol times time isn't very much. So if I sell that, you know, if I buy that back and then sell it in a month's time for vol times time, that's twice as much time and I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I can make more money. So sure. I, I wasn't, I'm not afraid of selling those, selling those short dated calls and puts. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I was really hunting for a butterfly. I, I, I yeah. really wanted to put one on. I really liked them. But I wanted to do it at a net credit, and I just could not find it. To, I couldn't make it work. Um, <clears throat> There's not I, enough smile, I don't think, in um, around the, the money. Um, yeah. Beyond ten delta, there's a bit more smile, but you know, beyond yeah. 10, delta, ten delta in two weeks, there's, there's no there's no premium. So exactly, and I didn't want to go too far in time, so yeah. so I let that go, and that's why I was happy just to put on the uh, the July twenty eighth uh, long long strangle just to. All right, it's going to be cheap. And I thought, as soon as the FOMC is over, if nothing happens, I'll just buy it back. I might mm. lose a couple of bucks. Again, I made a little bit of money on the calls, lost a bit of the puts, but it was just, just it was a just in case, you know, it was, it was an insurance bet. And actually, pro- probably, probably a good trade right now is actually selling risk reversals, maybe one or two week risk reversals. Because um, actually, what you're doing there, if you, if you hedge it, if you delta hedge it to zero delta, just hedge it daily. Because um, what you're doing is you're, you're kind of, um, allowing yourself to be slightly long the market, but protected on the downside. Um, and at the same time, you're picking up the implied um, interest rate, which is about 5%. Um, let, me, let me just check. I click on the futures tab one week. Oh, actually, <laughs> no, overnight it's 24%. Yeah, 7%. 7% for a week, uh, 5% for two weeks. So selling a risky and delta hedging to zero, it's probably not a bad trade, you know, because you're, you're going to pick up something. You're on mute again. You know what? I never do that, but it, I've got this annoying cough. So occasionally I'm, I'm muting myself <laughs> when I'm coughing and uh, I, I forget to unmute. But but yeah, so a risk reversal, we're, we're buying those puts and selling the calls. And oh, yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, I sold my first October today. I saw October came out. So I sold a 10 Delta call in, in October. Yes, yeah, so I saw that come out too. And actually, I bought a put. <laughs> um, because uh, I don't want to sell that far out just yet, but um, yeah, I'm thinking October 42,000 Bitcoin, no, no chance. <laughs> yeah, it, it's almost I don't want to say it's free money because the, the market <laughs> gods have a way of, of smoting you, yeah, yeah, but uh, it almost seems like free money right now. Well, I've, well, I've got I've got 12,000 dollars of, of strike to hedge that if I'm wrong, right? So, exactly, exactly, yeah. it's not going to go from, from 29 to 42 uh, yeah. like instantly. Well, I again. Market yeah. gods don't smoke me, but uh, yeah, we'll probably have time to, to adjust that. So If it does, th- then, the, then the vol spike will be enormous. And I won't, I won't care about that point one of a Bitcoin because I'll be selling five Bitcoins of, of, of premium at 100K. There you go. Perfect. And there's the perfect strategy for anyone who wants to know. <laughs> if we spike to 42,000 in one day, we'll be selling the 100K calls. Let me tell you. Absolutely. We'll yeah, damn right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, we've had the conversation before, maybe a, a year ago, where when Bitcoin was, you know, up in the 50s, we were talking about selling the 100Ks. We're like, hmm, hmm, it seems like free money. Hmm, should we do it? Well, what if, what if, what if? And we were probably looking at about, you know, eight, nine, 10 months out. Uh, and, and sure enough, it was free money. Free money, yeah. Anyways, uh, hang on. So let, let me just uh, go back to the slides. Let me, you stop sharing your screen. Let me my screen, yeah. I've just got a couple of little... Uh, Okay, so what I did was, you know, we're talking about the one by three. I love the one by three in certain situations. Uh, there's times when you don't want to do it. Um, the other thing is that if you can't, if you're going to go on holiday, I don't. Would, I'm not going to do anything if I'm going to go on holiday. It's going yeah. to put me in jeopardy. I'm not going to leave anything naked. So just just bear that in mind. So uh, we're, you know, at times we're happy to take on a bit more risk in certain environments. So. Let me just go here. So a one by three, or it's a ratio spread. You know, usually when people talk about ratio spreads, they're usually talking about a one by two. That's kind of a typical jargon ratio, but one by three is great. You can do a one by 10, whatever you want, right? It's a ratio. So it's three or more components where you've got a long option and that long option is usually at the money or in the money, typically. And then you're selling two or more short out of the money options against it. You can do this for a debit. You can do it for a credit. Just depends on where those strikes are, right? And that max profit 
is if the underlying closes at the short call strike price at expiration. You know, so if 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 if, if and that's uh, uh, you know if, if we go with a long um, a long call and then we sell some calls at a higher price, well, we want that long call to appreciate in value. We want the the options to expire right underneath those those short strikes. Uh, we, we keep everything. Now, is that going to happen? No. You know, ninety percent of the time that will will not happen. But if we can get close to that, that'd be that'd be lovely. So you know, it's neutral to slightly bullish or bearish if if it's a put spread. You know what? I, I like the idea of uh, going long one of the 30 delta and then short 10 of the 10 deltas. So that's an interesting oh, one trade. By 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let's, let's talk about those numbers and maybe we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll put one on. Well, and let's, well, uh, and then, yeah, I'm just thinking about the curve right now. It's pretty flat, as we said. And, um, Let's not stick our neck in the guillotine just yet on that. Let's, <laughs> let's, just, let's think about it before, before we do that one. We don't want to lead anyone uh, astray. Yeah. <laughs> More astray than usual, anyway. All right. Yeah. So here, here's a call ratio spread payoff diagram. Very simple. You know, over here, um, I assume you can see my screen there or my little cursor. Um, actually, I've got the, the whiteboard. Uh, you got the little pen over here. Here's the long strike right there. And here's the short strikes right there, right? That, that's, that's, that's all there is to it, is you're buying this, this long call and we're, we're selling these short strikes. So it gives us a little bit of room on the downside. So if the, if the underlying asset does increase in price, we've got a little bit of, bit of wiggle room before our break even. But after that, you know, if it's a one by three, we do have two naked calls that we're going to have to manage close off or we're gonna have to roll out or split into a strangler or whatever we're gonna do with it we're gonna to have to manage that but the reason why we like this in this environment is nothing's moving very much you know we do have the long call which is nice we can keep that long call or let's let's say things did go up and, and started to press our, our, our short strikes well, we can keep the long call and we can roll the, the, the two shorts out and keep let that long call ride and just get worth more and more eventually in this environment, I feel like it's pretty easy to kick the can down the road and make money overall on the whole damn thing. Uh, same thing, put ratio spread, just flip it around the other way. You know, we've got the long put here, sold, you know, two, three, however many you're selling there. And it's just a very, very simple diagram. So we're using them at times now because we want to play breakouts or news. So the market's going to move somewhere. It's not going to stay here forever. I guarantee that. I guarantee that, of course, and we can guarantee that. I mean, we, we're in a situation where we, we're saying the market's not moving. Actually, the market's moving up and down by sometimes a thousand bucks a day. But we're just we're just not noticing because there's no trend. Yeah, stuck stuck in this range. So, uh, you know, it's a nice way to to play the breakout. But in this environment, the breakout usually doesn't go very far, and that's what we're betting on. It's not going to go as far as our short strikes. So we don't think there's going to be any significant move in the market. We don't want to just pay outright for a directional bet because, you know, the market could stay like this for months. Who knows, right? And we'll just eat up cash, eat up cash, burn through cash. That sucks. So if we're going to put on uh, a bet, <clears throat> let, let's be paid for it. Let's make something or at least not have to pay for it if, yeah. if nothing else. And, you know, again, I, as I mentioned, if you're going to go on holiday, well, don't do this. You know, we're comfortable managing those naked short calls if we have to. Yeah, no problem. We'll just manage them. And the, uh, the other thing about the about the one by three is it's quite nice because it because it gives you a net credit if you do the do the right strikes. If you do it, you do about I don't know thirty delta to twenty delta or thirty delta to fifteen delta something like that. Mm -hmm. it, it'll pay you net, net net premium, which means that if it goes the wrong way, then you still get paid. Yeah, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I think with your with your trade you have on actually, if you want to share your screen and show, I think you you put the one by three on. That'd be great. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you're going to get paid something even if this market doesn't do a damn thing. And that's nice, right? Versus putting something on and having it expire. And, oh, my gosh, I'll put something on again, having it expire. So you're going to get paid something no matter what. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. The, the, the only way I don't get paid here is if we dump below about 26,500 or we rally up to, I think, 31,500. I mean, well, I've, got to, I've got to do something about those, those short calls, but that's fine. What are, what are the numbers for your for your one by three? I think the break even is. Yeah. What, what are the strikes, Richard? Oh, sorry, I, I missed. That. Oh, sorry. Um, Twenty nine thousand five hundred is my long call. Mm -hmm. 
and then my cover is a thousand dollars away, so thirty thousand five hundred. Okay, beautiful. So you sold the thirty thirty fives, uh, three of them, and you bought yeah. one of the twenty nine fives. Yeah, I'm just looking at the Bitcoin chart now, and you did some on the on the put side too, right? Yeah, the one I, once I did on the put side, I did did for net zero um, premium, mm. um, and that was I bought the twenty eight five hundreds and sold the twenty seven five hundreds. So I was just looking for a play on, you know, if there's huge disappointment or if someone sees this as an opportunity to offload some Bitcoins or, you know, mm -hmm. something like this. Yeah. And those um, are August 11, right? <clears throat> and had that happened, I, w I would have just um, rolled the, the, the 27500s out and then Delta hedged the 28500s and played the gamma. Mm -hmm. Just, I, that's 11th of August, right? Those yes. are the 15, 15 Yeah, yeah. I, I try. I go uh, two weeks. So I gave myself some time. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. So, and you got you got paid for the calls. Great. Uh, both of us didn't expect anything to happen, so this is just yeah. a kind of a what if. So that's great. Can earn a little bit of money while we're sitting on our hands waiting for the market to move. Uh, it's interesting because I, I haven't been paying as much attention to Bitcoin lately because I don't have any positions on. But you know, last week we talked about it. Uh, you know, it broke below its, its its little sideways trend, and it's staying below there mm. um, for now. For now, again, in these super low vol environments, it doesn't really mean all that much, or it has less meaning, I suppose, because it could easily pop back up in the range in, in ten minutes, and 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 that's it. But um, yeah, and if and if you would uh, if you were going to put this trade on today, then I, I probably wouldn't put it on at twenty nine five hundred. Now I'd probably put it on. Yep. Actually, I'd go long at thirty thousand five hundred, probably. And then short at thirty one five hundred. And if mm -hmm. you look at the the vols, you see I'm I'm paying thirty two point seven vol, mm -hmm. and I'm receiving thirty five point two. So you know, vol wise, it's the right trade. As, um, I'm playing the smile, and I'm selling more of the more expensive part of the smile than I'm paying for. Uh, and it still works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, uh, and you know, depending on the type of trader you are, depending on your availability, you know, I, I might be looking at a one by five later. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll sell it in one week. You know, I'll, I'll do a shorter dated one. Who knows? Like, like I, I, I like to uh, be creative with these in a high IV environment. I'm not going to do that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be much more careful. I'm going to widen those strikes way out, but so I think I every... could work, right? If you look at the 12 Delta, 32,500, mm -hmm. It's here. Um, it's at thirty-eight point seven volt. So if mm -hmm. I sell five of those, I'm receiving two hundred and fifteen basis points. And if I buy one of the um, thirty thousand five hundred, I'm paying one hundred and thirty-five basis points. Mm. So I'm. It's not bad. It's um, it's a eighty basis point premium, right? It's and f picking up some long gamma and getting paid to do it. I think it's all right. Yeah, I think. Uh, Actually, flip over. Would you mind just take a look at the Ethereum options chain and yeah. see what see what the Ethereum trade looks like? Similar on for August eleventh. If we can find similar IV, um, such a delta, we could pay one hundred and five and twelve delta. We could we could receive five uh, hundred uh, two hundred ish, just under two hundred. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's not horrible either. Yeah. 2050. What's what's Ethereum at right now? Yeah, that's that's reasonable. 1875 or so around there. I think it's got to be a pretty hard hard resistance at 2000, right? Yeah. On Ethereum. I, I I like the 2000, and I'm just looking at my trading view chart. Uh, I mean, well, that's what that's where I, my short strangle uh, the 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 11th mm. that I have on. That's where I put my my calls at. So uh, because of that. Um, oh, you know what? I've got I've got a bunch of. Uh, Spare margin. I could do that trade now. All right. Let's see. Let's, uh, let's pick up one of those at 105. We'll just uh, bid for that. And I don't say 12 delta. Um, I'm offering five of those at 39. Yeah, fine. Yeah, if anyone has any questions about <clears> this, <throat> uh, you know, feel free to, to ask in the chat. We'll head over to the Q and A pretty quick. 
Um, like, and I guess that's about it. We want to talk about the one by three. And again, what we want to do, and we're going to do for the next uh, couple of weeks, is we're just going to cover low IV strategies because that's the environment we've got right now. So these are the trades we're going to be putting on. So every week we'll probably be putting on the type of trade that we feel comfortable doing in a low IV environment to earn some money uh, because directional bets are fine, but you know, most of the time they're not going to work out, right? So we don't want to have to live off that, but we don't want to stick our neck out too far selling in a low IV environment. We need to be able to switch gears really quick because as IV starts to tick out, tick up, we're going to need to flip that strategy to the suite. So here's, um, here's the chart. This is the low, low IV environment. Here we, we're at the absolute lows of implied vol for this year. Yeah. Um, uh, although um, this implied vol is 35.9, so this is the, the one month, the 30 day vol. Um, mm -hmm. uh, this seems low. Uh, it's actually, you know, reasonably high for a stock, um, but it's Bitcoin is now or ETH, ETH is now trading at the same sort of volatility as a reasonably um, volatile stock on the S and P 500. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you look at the historical vol over the past 15 days, we're at, uh, about equal. But if you speak to a market maker, I spoke to a to a options market maker this morning. They were telling me that actually realized vols are more like 19%. Mm. So you've now got um, wow. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like less volatile than Microsoft stock. You know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, that, that's yeah. extraordinary. And, yeah. and who would have thunk that it would have happened so quickly? Yeah. Um, so so the, 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 and the, cor the corollary of that is that you know, the trade is still selling vol. Mm. Um, implied vols are still trading at about 14 vols over, over realized. Um, but just don't do it. Just don't do it in massive size because if it does go, yeah. it's going to go hard. Yeah, and, and yeah. hurt you. Or have the protection on, uh, or be there to manage it. Yeah, one because if, if we because if we, if we get another one, one of these spikes up to say sixty or seventy, um, we're now doubling the vol, which means you're doubling the price of all your options, which is fine yeah. if you're on a one week or two week, but if you're on a three month or six month option, doubling the price is going to really hurt. Yes, indeed, hurt would be. Uh... Un, 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 understatement for sure. All right, so uh, yeah, if let's let's jump over to the Q and A. Um, we yeah. do have some questions here. Uh, a couple from Luke. <clears throat> Sorry, Richard, was there anything else you wanted to share on that? Or are you good? No, no, that's fine. Question. I think questions are the best way to get information across, right? Okay. Uh, so Luke's saying, if you have a delta neutral strategy and are hedging with futures or perps, and you want to get filled as a market maker, uh, what do you do if you don't get filled, and what are the tricks to getting filled? <laughs> Uh, yes, that's a good question. Oh, we've got we've got a few things here. I need some Marcus questions. Uh, Marcus question. Uh, Marcus question. Uh, so where where are we? Um, uh, so I was uh, you moved it. So I, asked a question. To, I think you're supposed to go up from the bottom. Um, because I was reading it on, on the chat, not the Q and A, and then you. Moved oh, it. sorry, dude. That's okay. Uh, but, but no problem. I, I can read it again if you want. Right, it's minimize hedging costs. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really important, particularly if you're not on a retail account, and actually also if you're on a an institutional account to minimize your hedging costs. So I never act as as taker of futures or petrols. I always act as, as maker, and I will sit there for um, an hour if I have to, just re requoting um, just either side of the of the of the bid ask um, before I get filled, and it's just a case of continually quoting. And if the market moves, you just move your quote, which obviously means if help, having a computer to help you do it uh, makes life easier. Um, and that's exactly what we do. We just we just we look for the mid price and we quote just above it or just below it, and we hold that quote for thirty seconds or a minute, and then we look again and either modify the quote or leave it in until we do get yeah. filled. And eventually you'll get filled. I mean, it could take twenty minutes, but yeah. um, in, in my systematic regime, I hedge every hour. You know, I, I, I run risk every hour and I hedge the delta to zero religiously. And if I did that while paying retail taker fees, I would end up burning about 20% of my premium, of my collateral every year. Um, yeah. By acting as maker on the perp, I'm paying zero. So I can afford to be a lot wrong in terms of the price I trade at before I, before it matters that I'm you know, uh, trading at the wrong price. And if you trade uh, on the one or two week um, futures, they'll actually pay you. Even if you're retail, they'll pay you uh, maker fees of one basis point. And one, and one basis point on, on Bitcoin is $3, right? So you can afford to be $3 wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. 
Well, actually, you can afford to be three three times five for fifteen dollars wrong and still be right by being a maker. I just realized something that I don't know offhand, and maybe you know the answer to, Richard. Uh, so, depending on the system you use, and I'm thinking about equities, if whether you're using Arca or Brew, it doesn't matter the order entry route. If you put in like iceberg orders or hidden orders, and sometimes if you're making the market, you don't get paid anything uh, or it's flat or fees. Do you know how it works on Dare? But if you don't yeah. see a, 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 an order there and you, and you go and all of a sudden you get filled because someone was sitting there hidden. Uh, yeah, the, the, the iceberg is always treated as a taker. So um, so you'll, you'll be maker if you, okay. if you touch an iceberg. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, I assume but that that's great. Uh, so Luke has a couple more questions. Uh, regarding the 40 vol strategy, and that was the strategy we talked about before where we were selling the weekly 40 call, <clears throat> 40 delta call. Um, in that example, we were just letting it run to expiry and not managing it, which is something we wouldn't recommend. Um, what if the 40 vol isn't available in the options chain? Yeah, it, it, there's a good chance it won't be. To it. So here we are on uh, uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, at the moment, there's the 30,000 is at 42 volt. Uh, sorry, 42 delta. Um, uh, I presume you meant delta, not 40 vol. Um, yes. Uh, although, actually, Luke, 40 vol is a bit of a magic number for, for me. I don't like selling vol under 40, uh, by the way. Um, but right now, you kind of have to. Um, yeah, if, if the 40 delta is available, it often won't be. Then you can either just pick the closest or you can interpolate. So you could say, I'll take the one either side of it and trade some ratio between the two. Mm -hmm. um, whatever whatever regime is, seems right for you. Um, and it, it kind of doesn't matter that much. The, it, I mean, it's not that 40 delta is a magic number. It's just that of all of the all of the numbers we tried, on on the constant maturity of also because that was the one that came up with the best returns, but that's not to say that forty two might not be better, or that thirty eight could be better. I mean, who knows? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we'll know if we back test it. Um, mm -hmm. But in general, I, I just try and get as close as possible. I, I, I used to I used to carefully compute uh, how well how much of the you know thirty five delta should I sell versus how much of the for fifty delta. I don't bother these days. I just pick the closest, and because I'm just doing a little bit every day, um, it all averages out anyway. He had another great question too, and you know this is a topic of a lot of conversations. What's the trick to be gamma positive or or gamma neutral when your strategy is selling? Because <laughs> sellers were almost always going to be gamma negative, right? You're, like yeah, yeah, you're, yeah you're, you're you're always going to be short gamma if you're if you're short if you're, if you're long theta, you'll you'll be short gamma for sure. Um, unless you've got some bizarre situation where, uh, I mean, if you were long some long dated thing that was super high vol and the short dated was super low vol and you were short it, then maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you mm -hmm. know, no, I don't. Yeah, it would be an anomaly, right? So you know, the thing is, is crypto is twenty four seven, and if if I'm a, a seller, you know, the market's kind of doing its normal thing. I'm just going to be long, a short, short gamma. That's all there is to it. And I'll just have to manage that. We can hedge it off. That's, that's the trick, I suppose. One, one thing I do do is I, I do sometimes compute where can I get the most um, theta for the, the least gamma. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you do that kind of dumbly, do for every single strike, what the computer will tell you is that you should be trading the one delta, one um, delta. Six, <laughs> like six month yeah. calls or something, yeah. uh, and receiving I don't know, nothing for them. Um, but they, that will be the the, the best um, theta per per gamma, but but it doesn't take into account trading fees and and uh, and so on and hedging mm -hmm. costs. But um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm generally looking for the the most efficient theta I can get. You know, mm -hmm. tends tends to tends to be in a, in the one or two week tenors actually, either mm -hmm. one or two weeks or six months. Mm -hmm. And you know, in my mind too, let, let's say I, I'm short delta doom. The market makes a pretty big move. And then I make some type of a shorter term directional bet. My overall gamma might still be negative, but that directional bet will pay off. I'll close it and I'll go back to managing the, the short. So it's kind of a dynamic thing. Now, the one thing I will say, if you're trading equities, for example, well, the market closes, right? So not, who knows what's going to happen? You wake up tomorrow morning, 
the market can gap up, gap down, and that's where your real danger lies. So you know, before you go to bed, before the market closes, you might want to buy some overnight protection to give yourself neutral or slightly long gamma. Get rid of it in the morning, you know, a one day option or a weekly, whatever. You you can do things like that to uh, just protect yourself if you're if you're if you're quite heavily short uh, gamma. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, when I hedge to do. To... Okay, question from Dom. When I hedge my options delta, do I need to hedge the net delta as, as, as I was selling one Bitcoin of options, then getting long one Bitcoin of futures? This leaves me with long delta still. The goal would be to accumulate more Bitcoin. Okay, if you're going to, um, if you're hedging into dollars, i.e. you're accumulating in dollars, then you'll need to hedge the, the total delta, not, not the net delta. Um, and you'll also need to hedge the underlying toy coins that you own. If you're hedging into Bitcoins because you want to accumulate Bitcoins, then to stay delta neutral, you should just hedge the net transaction delta um, only uh, of your position. And you can, uh, am I sharing still? Yeah, you can uh, positions, you see this, this checkbox here, net transaction delta, that will change the delta you're seeing. And net transaction delta, um, if I can remember remember properly, will show you the delta that's due to the um, the option uh, PV movement, not not the delta that's due to the intrinsic value. Because because whenever you've got intrinsic value in a in a Deribit option, you are effectively long Bitcoin, so you're short dollars. And so if you um, click on that, that takes that into account. And if you Click on the checkbox, then it shows you just the the Black Shoals Delta in Bitcoin terms. Clear as mud. Clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question from Luke. Uh, can you explain uh, who or probably how to set up an arbitrage between implied vol and realized vol? Oh, this is very simple. Uh, all you've got to do is build a time machine and go back <laughs> two weeks in the in the past um, and sell an option if the implied vol is higher than the vol you realized over the past two weeks before you went back in time. Okay. What if we don't have a time machine? <laughs> well, then you've got to guess. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're seeing here uh, if on this one here is um, you're seeing a weighted average of the uh, realized volatility over the past two weeks. Mm. Um, and so it's, it's obviously already old and wrong, but mm -hmm. it's better than – it's the best you've got, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, kind of telling you that uh, vol seems to be trending downish now, and it's quite low uh, the, the realized vol. And so theoretically, looking at the range of this stuff, if I'm selling options of 35 vol and I'm hedging efficiently, then I should make money, right? Because I'll pick up all this area mm -hmm. between 35 vol and this line. Um, if the market carries on now, it continues to do what it has been doing for the past two weeks. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So we've, we've got a question from Jean, and I'm a little bit concerned about her. I feel like, uh, or I, I guess Jean, <laughs> I, I've, known, I've known genes who are, who are both male and female. I think the gene is going to the dark side. Yeah. And she said, <clears throat> she started to find alternative to Bitcoin and ETH to sell higher vols like selling altcoin options. Yeah, this is the road to madness. Yeah. It is um, the road to, madness. to be honest, you could, if you have enough money, you can go and open an account with um, firms like uh, um, what are they called Galaxy Digital or um, STS or um, IMC, and you can dump half a million dollars of collateral with them and then trade over the counter um, options on pretty much anything you want. They'll make you a price, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. you will you will trade the price they give you, and when you want to exit you'll exit on the price they give you and you're trusting them for their settlement prices and their index prices every day. No, sounds um, great. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you'll sign an ISDA with them and you'll sign a waiver to say that you're a professional investor and you're high net worth and all the rest of it. But I'm guessing if you are high net worth, um, you probably wouldn't be bothering your time uh, learning stuff from us. And you certainly wouldn't be bothering saying vol on altcoins for a living. You'd be doing something else that, you know, you could sue somebody for if they did it wrong. Um, if you're looking for more vol, I mean, you might want to look at Tesla stock. I mean, you know, mm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, some de- yeah, commodities will spike. And, and te- Tesla stock is probably a good proxy for Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, there are some platforms I looked at, oh, maybe six, eight months ago that were these decentralized platforms and they had options on uh, some different, you know, at the time was Luna, Solana, Dare, but did have Solana too for, for a while, some other ones, but uh, it, it just didn't seem, it wasn't something I was willing to, to entangle myself with. So, yeah. Um, yeah, let's wait for the vol to come back in, into uh, Bitcoin Ethereum. It will come back. I, I, I did do a trade actually last uh, last year on uh, Tesla. I, I sold a, a risk reversal on Tesla. Um, it was coinciding around the purchase of Twitter. I remember that. I think yeah. you were calling it your trade of the century or something. Like it, that. it was, yeah. yeah. Trade of the decade, yeah. 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 Trade of the decade. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, we'll check back in in, well, nine years and we'll see how that's going. <laughs> All right. Another question from Luke. Uh, how do you minimize the hedging costs while maximizing the premium protection? By aggressively market making the the perpetual, um, and also if in the final week I also try to match the delta from the options with the delta from the dated futures, so that I don't get um, uh, suddenly put into a massive delta on expiry. Um, but I, again, I do that by making, um, and I'll, I'll actually I'll just sit there and sell point one of the future, the dated future, and then buy back point one of the perpetual and keep on doing that on a market making basis trusting that i'm making i'm making as much in fees in in maker fees on the one week option uh, future as i'm losing in 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 um in spread all right uh a question from alejandro uh don't you think it'd be a good idea to buy vol now in anticipation of the etf decision <laughs> how much money have you got alejandro uh, probably, but I don't know if you've ever seen the film The Big Short, where um, the genius hedge fund manager, you know, shorts the housing market, and he's absolutely right, but his clients all leave him because they they don't share his faith and um, they they uh, they bail out the fund because the fund's down 20% or whatever, because it's, it's paying the premiums on the, on the long gamma, on the, sorry, the short theta on the, on the trade. So it's the same trade, right? You're, you're right. And you're going to be right in the long run for sure. Um, how, how long that long run's going to be is anyone's question. Could be a month, no. could be a year. Can you afford to pay your bill, your theta bills for a year and still feel, feel good, mm-hmm. good about it? And in, and in nine months time, when you've been paying, a, you know, nine months of theta um, and you've maybe paid you know enough premium that you could have bought a ferrari instead and you'd have lost the same amount of money but had more fun um you, you've got to be able to answer to yourself and so everyone has their own threshold on that so what we try to do is we sell vol to make premium and then we use some of that premium to buy vol um and sort of just gradually try and build a build a, a, a long vol position that way and that's probably why you see that uh, longer dated vols are higher than short dated vols because people don't want to be selling long dated vol because it's there's such massive vega risk um uh so they're selling short dated vol and they're buying long dated vol because they're doing, doing that exact trade excuse me um mm-hmm. and if you look at the um implied vols in december say uh, the at the moment at the monies are uh, 44.9 or 44.8 right or, uh, Say so 45 volt, and look at the uh, the one week um, is 30 volt. So there's 15 volt premium for buying long dated, and so and that's exactly what people are doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, uh, and if you do, you know, if you have a hunch that it's going to go up in two weeks or one month, you you could always buy it uh, as a spread, so you at least pay less. So. You, mm. You know, you're going to cap your upside, but at least you're paying less. And if it doesn't go, well, you can do it again and again. And at the end Actually, of the year. Yeah, you know what? I hadn't, hadn't checked, but the, 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 sm- the smile is probably quite aggressive on the December options. So if you were to buy that the monies, you'd pay paying 45. But if you were to sell, you could sell, yeah, you could sell the 25s for 50. Mm, interesting. You could probably do like a one by three. I'll look into that. Might, might, that might be a good trade. 
All right, cool. A uh, question from Gene. Are you using second order Greeks aside from gamma? Absolutely. So you, yeah, um, so you, you mean things like uh, Vanna and Volgamma. Um, I, we Bro. do for, we do, I, I, I do for my daily explainer reports, um, which are prepared for me by a quant. Um, but in terms of my day-to-day -day trading decisions, no, uh, no. Um, I just don't think the market is that finely tuned that it matters that much. Mm. Um, from it for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Luke says he has some questions over there. No, he doesn't anymore. Uh, we, I think, I think we got all your questions, Luke. Let us know if we didn't. Uh, I'm just taking a quick look at the poll. So, 68% of people said no, they did not put on a strategy for yesterday's FMC. I'm not at all surprised. Hmm. Most people I knew were just sitting on their hands. There's a few people who are gung ho who thought for sure something was going to happen. Uh, but, uh, as we saw, nothing did. So I'm going to end that poll. But uh, yeah, I'm not surprised there. We're going to, we're going to need to see some some real stimmy check action to to stimulate the crypto market. I think. Um, yeah, we need some news for sure. Uh, the ECB came out as we mentioned at the beginning of the call already. Uh, they did what they advertised. Uh, I think it was a 25 basis point. Japan tomorrow. I don't think anybody cares. I tell you what uh, would be so, bullish for Bitcoin is if they if the governments stopped pussyfooting around and actually actually declared full on World War Three, that would do it. That would do it. Yes, let's <laughs> not do that though, Richard. Um, <laughs> there, it's got to be a better way. To uh, what was what was always good for good for business and great for trading. That's true. Um, how about an old fashioned financial crisis? Uh, we're bored. Everyone's bored of that. We've been in a, in a protracted financial crisis for the past twenty-five years. No one gives a shit. Maybe we need a big, a big market crash, a, a stock market <laughs> crash, and everybody will pull their money out and flood into crypto. No, right? It won't work. No, nobody believes market crashes anymore. If, if, the, if the market crashes twenty percent, we know exactly what's going to happen. The Fed will print money, hmm. and and, the, and the, the market will recover the next week to double what it was before. No one cares. There's no one's got any concept of risk because there is no concept of risk because whatever whatever happens, the answer is fuck it, print money and give it to people. <laughs> well, even when you look at 2008, for example, I mean, it didn't it didn't rebound all this in a week. It took a while, but I, I think S and P was this morning. I think I looked. I think it went to 2023 highs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, up, up and away. So. Uh, we'll see what happens. I think that's the end of the questions. Uh, we're almost at the top of the hour, so I think that was great. Uh, I hope you guys got some value out of this. We do use the one by three. Uh, you know, Richard did it on both sides of the market, as you can see. And we're going to keep focusing on low IV strategies for the next couple of weeks because they're nice to have in your back pocket. And we'll also try and do some execution of those strategies that we happen to talk about. So until next time, yeah. thanks. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put on some of those one, one by fives. I, li I like those. We, we should do okay, it. And that, yeah. that was that was an ETH. I, I'm training a Bitcoin, Bitcoin book at the moment, but I I could do both. Yeah, why not? Yeah, cool. cool. I, I, think oh, yeah, I, did, sorry, I did do one, didn't I? Yeah. I think you said you were buying the thirty Delta August eleven thirty Delta, and you were selling five of the twelve. I'm, Delta? Yeah, I'm just waiting to get filled now. Ah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got the memory of a goldfish. I forget what I traded even <laughs> after I traded it. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Hey everyone, we'll we'll catch we'll catch you next week and uh, happy trading firm. Bye bye. Thank you.